Hi there, I'm James Brayshaw. Thanks for coming back to hear a bit about the Lake of Fire, which is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to do this in 3 minutes and 45 seconds, if at all possible. So what's the Lake of Fire? Let's be clear about this. The Lake of Fire, as we hear about it today, in this eternal torture of burning where people are suffering in pain and smoke is ascending forever, does not exist as that kind of an ethereal, tor torturous concept. If we look at the essential element of understanding the historical context of the biblical writer, whether it's Old or New Testament, apostolic writings or Gospels, Tanakh or Torah, we must understand the historical context. If you were in that period listening to a speaker talk about the lake of fire, you and I would both hear them speaking of Gehenna. Gehenna. This was a garbage pit, a very massive burning pile of garbage outside of Jerusalem. And this thing was kept burning forever. The smoke was ascending forever in the thoughts of the individuals who would throw garbage on it because they would continue to stoke this fire with new garbage. But you know what was also stoking this fire at times? Often they throw humans on there, criminals, people who had committed crimes and were dead or people who were diseased and dead and had no proper burial would often get thrown onto the lake of fire. And, and those who are referenced in the New Testament about their worm does not die, we find a passage here. In the New Testament that speaks about that and those are the people that were actually thrown not very far into the lake of fire if you can imagine this in Mark 7 if your eye causes you to stumble throw it out it's better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell where their worm does not die and their fire is not quenched well that hell is a reference to the Gehenna which is a reference to the Sheol which is a reference to the lake of fire but some folks were thrown in, not very far, they were right on the edges where it wasn't hot enough for them to burn up, so the worms would get at them and consume their bodies, and that's how they would actually be consumed up, by, because the worm would not die from the fire, so the worm would eat those bodies. So the lake of fire is Gehenna, is the outside. All those terms we find referenced biblically. Lake of fire, Gehenna, Gehenna, Sheol, Tartarus, Tartaru. They're all referencing the same thing, a place where dead people go and burn up and die and cease to exist. There's no burning, tormentuous place that a person is cast into to live, to be alive or conscious about endless suffering and torment. In fact, if we look at John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That verse is always thought of as the people who believe in Christ will never die, they'll enjoy eternal life. They don't perish. The contrast is that people who don't follow the Christ do die, which means they don't have eternal life, which means they can't have an eternal existence or life of suffering in any conscious way. And we find a really neat uh, exposition of this when we talk about Christ descending to hell. This one I'll give you real quickly. When Jesus descended to hell for three days, we know the hell comes from the, the root word, a Teutonic root, that means to be covered over with dirt. People used to put potatoes in the cellar, in a hell is what they called them. Well, Christ himself was sent to hell for three days, which means he, he descended to death for three days, is what the writer is trying to give us the message about. Whether it's true or not, I'm not going to dispute that. What we do know for a fact is that the writing is there. And what does it mean? Does it mean that he descended into the eternal lake of fire under the earth where Satan supposedly presides with all his demons to rescue the souls of the dead? Facts are no, folks. Christ died for three days according to the message the writer was trying to offer the reader or hear at the time. And that hell, that Sheol, that Gehenna that he ascended to means he simply died, was in a non-conscious state for three days, and three nights.